What's going on, everybody? Uh, I just wanted to do a segment. Uh, I did want to do a Tea Tuesday this week, but then it became a Tea Thursday after I put the Hawaii vlog out. And then sure enough, uh, it's Friday. <laughs> so I guess you can call this like a fried tea. Yeah, that doesn't work at all, does it? Anyway, a couple of reasons why I want to be able to do this tea segment on this Friday. Number one, it's to start giving those retweet shout outs uh, to all of you who retweeted and liked the posts about the vlog from Hawaii. Thank you so much. I just wanted everyone to watch that vlog because I freaking loved it. I thought it was amazing. Now, the other reason why I wanted to do this tea segment is uh, so that I can finally start type two foodie. Now, we're not really going to talk about food or I'm not going to have any footage of food in this video, but I did want to get out this little piece of philosophy that I want everybody who follows Type 2 Foodie uh, to sort of keep in mind. But before we get into that, why don't we talk about the tea for today? All right, today we have, oops. All right, today we have another tea pouch as well. Is, is what I'm gonna call it, just for caution's sake. Uh, I'm, the video that originally got demonetized got remonetized. So I guess the algorithm realized that I wasn't actually saying what I was saying or talking about what I was saying. In reality, it was just this. A pouch of tea makes for a healthy drink. Why would you demonetize me for that? So just for caution's sake, I'm going to call these tea pouches. Now this is Earl Grey tea. Now Earl Grey tea, you've probably heard a lot. Maybe you've used it as a joke to sort of uh, tease and tickle your British friends, but Earl Grey tea actually has a very rich history. In Britain, it wasn't easy to get the same flavors of tea. They had to import them and ship them from China. And what they would do with Earl Grey tea is they would actually add a citrus flavor to it. It is a certain type of orange that they would add to it to flavor the leaves and these uh, the mixture of green and black leaves here in the Earl Grey were then given a citrus flavor which uh, basically gave it its distinctive flavor. But Twinings was able to take the brand of Earl Grey and make it their own in Britain especially. They're one of the oldest suppliers of Earl Grey tea because the Earl himself in the 1830s who ruled over parts of Britain or really all of Britain, Lord Grey as you would call him, Chinese delegates actually introduced him to this version or flavor of tea and they made it for him and they used it at that royal palace in order to entertain all of their guests. Some of the guests eventually said why don't we go ahead and sell this because it tastes so good and it was at that point that a small company at the time called Twinings decided to be the main distributor of Earl Grey tea and that's why we have this and this is one of their most uh, popular and highest selling versions of the Earl Grey tea. In any case, the brewing instructions say it's two to four minutes and you can put a little bit of milk in there if you want to. I'm not gonna do that this time. I tend to not put anything in my teas. I like them just as plain and as pristine as possible, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this going. And I do want to give my shout outs to the first 10 people who retweeted uh, the vlog that I put out a couple days ago. If you still haven't seen it, please do so. It is a great video. I had a lot of fun putting it together. And those 10 people are listed over on the side right now. A, a special shout out over to uh, Rami's KR, uh, who made sure to tweet that he was the fourth person <laughs> who retweeted the tweet. So, all right, go for it. Uh, Renzo Claros, I mean, you have, uh, you have retweeted and uh, replied to a lot of my uh, messages over the last however so long. So I want to give you a special shout out as well. And to the rest of you, thank you so much for checking out the video and sharing it around as well. I'm going to try and do these shout outs often, especially on these tea segments. All right, so three minutes are on the clock for this Earl Grey tea that is steeping right now. So let's talk about a phrase that I kind of want everybody to remember, not only for this upcoming holiday season, but also for the future of Type 2 Foodie. And it's the phrase, it's okay. Now, what do I mean by that? It's okay is something that you can tell yourself often, and that's obviously going to be one big facet of it, but I also want to talk about saying it's okay to other people. You're at a Christmas party, and uh, in my case, as a Filipino, there's usually a lot of uh, food there that I might not eat on the daily. Uh, and while I might indulge a little bit and tell myself it's okay, I also need to remember that it's okay for me to tell other people it's okay. Now, as a diabetic, I, it's all about not having a lot of carbs, not having a lot of sugar. And at a Filipino party, there's a ton of both. So if somebody is trying to offer me some stuff that I know is not going to be good for me and makes my blood sugar higher and might actually detract from my life, then I have to just very gently say it's okay. And most of the time, people are going to be okay with what you say to them. And especially for somebody like me, I do have a very real reason as to why I don't want to eat all that rice or all of that cheesecake, no matter how much I want to. Especially one of my big weaknesses, which is eggnog, which I have to say no to pretty much all the time now. 
But for all of you out there, uh, what I'm trying to do with Type 2 Foodie is provide a low-carb alternative to a lot of the places or foods that you might already enjoy. Like, for example, I'll go to In-N-Out and I'll tell you how to be low-carb at a place like In-N-Out. Or I might go to a place like Chipotle and do the same thing. And then I'll also do recipes and whatnot that show you how to make a low-carb version of your favorite foods. Uh, it's basically me taking this journey and sharing with you everything that I find. So with this low-carb lifestyle that we're looking for, obviously saying it's okay to other people means that we're also committing to the health choices that we want to make. And I know that in this upcoming year, in 2018, there are a lot of you going to be out there trying to make New Year's resolutions and it might only take days for you to break them, but you know what? It's okay. I always tell people the first rule of really life or anything is don't be so hard on yourself. But that comes with a very real commitment to being better the next time around. If you say it's okay to yourself all the time to the point where you're actually indulging too much and it becomes a habit and it becomes a bad habit in your life, then you gotta reassess things. Saying it's okay to yourself is not a justification for bad behavior. Saying it's okay means that sometimes you do want to enjoy maybe a piece of cheesecake or maybe a little bit of extra uh, drink when you're at a party. But it's also about knowing what's going to happen when you do so. And that's what I mean by the segments that you're going to see on Type 2 Foodie. I want to give you the information that you need in order to make certain choices that I think would be healthy for you. Because as a Type 2 diabetic, the diet that I have adopted over the last two and a half years after being diagnosed has actually helped me so much that I'm convinced it would help any of you. So if you want to join me on this journey in Type 2 Foodie, then we're going to all make that commitment to each other and make sure that in those times when we might flub up a little bit, we just remind ourselves, it's okay. All right, so I think I went a little bit over the three minutes, but that's okay because Earl Grey takes up to four minutes uh, to steep. So I gave myself a little bit of leeway there, uh, but I also put it in some pretty hot water, like 205 degrees, as you saw earlier. Uh, so it might be a little bit too hot still, but um, I, I took the, the tea pouch out already. So let's see. Earl Grey tea is always nice to have. Uh, I might be having it a little bit too late in the day for the level of caffeine that it has because it is a darker tea. Uh, but I still enjoy it. It's going to be great. And I have a whole box of Twinings tea that's just right over there. And if I don't want to do anything too fancy, I just grab one of those tea pouches, throw it in some hot water, and there you go. And to that end, you can head on to the description down below. I did link uh, via affiliate links, of course, to a couple of versions of tea that I think you would really enjoy. My last tea video was about matcha green tea, and it's also incredibly easy to make, as is most tea. Uh, so make sure you go check those out and head into the description below to see everything that I'm up to. Uh, and don't forget to check out the other vlogs. I'm going to be doing a few more uh, in the coming weeks, uh, and I'm actually going to catch up on some vlogs that I wanted to do like a month ago, uh, and I just didn't really have a whole lot of time for it. I go on on holiday vacation next week so you can look forward to a lot of content from me here on the JVYT. So with that I'm going to give you one final happy holidays, merry christmas, and thank you so much for watching and sticking around on this channel. I hope that you'll join me on this type 2 foodie journey as you join me on my vlogs, my gaming, and uh, even my tech and tea videos throughout uh, all that I do here. So thank you very much for watching. Be kind to each other, be kind to yourselves, and remember enjoy your tea everybody.